This video is going to cover everything you need to know about printing and installing the Chainlink Cable Cover mod on your Anycubic Viper. There are chapters available for you to skip to if needed, but without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. So the files I'll be using are from this Thingiverse posting created by Uncle Sash. But just in case this posting gets deleted in the future, I've made a Google Drive link with all the STL files. The original instructions are in German, but a Google translated version can be found further down the post. They're not the easiest to follow, which is why I decided to make this tutorial. The post covers what parts you need to print, but if you download all the files, be sure that you are printing the correct STLs, since there have been several revisions to some of the parts over time. To save you some time, only the necessary STLs are in my Google Drive link, as well as the number of how many of each part you need to print. Once you have them downloaded, start printing. I spread my prints out over the course of a few days, since there's no way to fit all the parts on the bed at once. The posting recommends a resolution of 0.15mm and infill set to 25%, which is what I used. Other than that, leave your printer settings the same. Print the following parts. 23 small chain link cover V2, 23 small drag chain V2.1, 40 widened chain link cover V2, 40 widened drag chain V2.1. These chain links and drag chains will make up three separate chains, with the 40 chain links and drag chains making one 26 link long chain and another 14 link long chain. One widened PSU cable split V2.1, one widened hot end mount V2. Now for these next few parts, there are some more details to add. There are two widened platform chain mounts, V2 and V3. I used V2 as it is a bit thicker where the chain connects and the tolerances for going around the extruder are tighter. If you struggle to make the V2 fit, try V3. Also, while the creator of these parts say supports aren't required, I'd recommend using one for this overhang. My part was fixable with a little fire and sanding, so I used it as is. And finally, one bed cable reinforced V2. However, if I was to do this again, I'd use this remix made by RobMC7683. The one included in the original post works fine, but I'll show you why this remix part would work better later in the video. Now that everything is printed, start connecting all the chain links together. They should snap together fairly easily, just apply a little force to bend one part over another. You need 23 small chain links, 26 widened chain links, and 14 more widened chain links to make three chains. I found that the chains were a little stiff, so I had my girlfriend bend each link back and forth a few times. Much better. Thanks, babe. Now onto the reinforced bed cable. This attaches by removing the original part, first by cutting off the zip tie, then unscrewing the two 5.5mm nuts, and slipping this part onto the two bolts. Some users commented that this part slid off easily, since there's nothing stopping it from coming off other than the tightness of the nuts, which is why I'd recommend using the remixed part, where the part has holes for the bolts rather than slots. If mine falls off, I'll be printing one of these to replace it, but for now, this was fine. Now onto the PSU split. Attach your 26 link long and 23 link long chain to this part, with the open side facing up. These chains are different widths, and so are the two chain connectors on this part, so make sure you're putting them in the correct place. Cut off the pre-existing zip ties, remove this end cap near the power button, and line up the slots on the part with the slots on the printer. These tolerances are very tight, and since my first layer was a little wider than the rest of it, I needed to sand off some material to make it fit. Once it fits, slide it on until it's about halfway between the Z-axis motor and the back of the printer. Now time to learn how to put on the chain link covers. Each chain link has a spot for a chain link cover and it should snap on fairly easily. But wait, I was wrong here. The tail of the chain link cover should be facing towards the front of the chain link or where the peg holes are. This way the next chain link is able to flex without any interference. Now start attaching them to your chain that runs from the base to the extruder. I'd recommend raising your hot end so the cable is elongated and easier to work with.
leave a few empty slots near the top of the chain so it's easier to work with in later steps. Now, do the same for the cable running from the base to the bed. Moving the bed back makes this easier. I left some unattached here, but if you're confident your bed cable attachment is secured well, feel free to connect the chain to it and add covers for every chain link. Onto the platform chain mount, you'll need to remove your extruder to install this. First, loosen these three bolts using the 2.5mm Allen wrench that came with your printer. Be sure to hold onto the motor as these screws are connected to it. Once they're separated, carefully set them both aside and slide on the platform chain mount. There are two sets of grooves on this part. Make sure they're both slid onto the platform or the part will sit crooked. The extruder will sit very flush up against this part. And like before, since my first layer was a bit too wide, I had to sand some material off. Make sure the three bolts line up with the holes on the plate and that the extruder is sitting flush and not interfered by the platform chain mount. Hold the extruder motor up to the three bolts and get each bolt started. It's important to tighten these down evenly, almost like how you tighten lug nuts on a car. Once you have all three started, go in a circle and tighten them down bit by bit, holding the extruder and the motor together. Once it's secured, you can attach the chain to the part. Now onto the hot end mount. Start by removing the hot end cable from its housing. I removed the front cover to the hot end as I was figuring this out on my own, but you don't need to do this. The hot end mount clips under the wheel spacers, but I found mine was too tight to fit, so I stretched the slots out on the part with some needle nose pliers. Push it onto the right spacer first, holding the Y axis bar up as you press down, then clip it onto the left spacer. Now run the cable under and in front of the extruder motor and put it through the chain connector on the platform chain mount so you can run the cable through the chain. Attach your chain link covers but leave a few off on the end to allow the cable to flex as the extruder moves back and forth. Now move all the axes around and see where you need to add or remove chain link covers. And you're done! Back into my enclosure and you can see this is much cleaner than before, and I don't have to worry about the cables ending up on top of the bed. Make sure you re-level your bed and check your retraction after doing this, and run a test print before attempting any larger printing projects to make sure everything still works. If you end up doing this mod to your printer, I'm sure the creators of the parts would appreciate a tip, and same here if you like this tutorial. Hopefully, you found this video quality, and until next time, take care.